Good morning and welcome to this, our Sunday service for the second Sunday of Lent on the 28th of February 2021 or whenever you're watching this because of course you can watch this at your leisure. Again, still too dangerous for us to meet in person and in person worship. But uh, the end is in sight as uh, the government uh, give us a roadmap for ending lockdown and we look forward to meeting in church once more. Our call to worship this morning. Lent calls us to a journey this and every day. Following Jesus wherever he leads us, Lent calls us to a journey to the place where God covenants with us to receive the new names we are given. Lent calls us to worship together in the spirit, to tell future generations the good news. Lent calls us to practice justice, to bring God's hope to all people. Lent calls us to faithful living, to trust the one who gives us life. Lent calls each of us to take up our cross, to trust the one who bears it with us. Lent calls us to journey with God. Let us worship God who walks with us this and every day. And so we sing together. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? And so we approach God with our prayers. Let us pray. Though people may turn their backs on us, you do not hide your face from us. Though others may try to take away our hope, you assure us of that future awaiting for us. 
You speak your name, inscrutable creator, and it is enough. When we try to dictate our fears to you, you invite us to follow you into self-denial and service. As we struggle to shape our lifestyle to yours, you carry us with you wherever we go. You speak your good news, teacher of open hearts, and it is enough. Though we have done nothing to earn them, you pour out the gifts of grace and mercy upon us. When we stumble over our lack of trust, you set us back on our feet to follow you into the kingdom. You speak your peace, breath of holiness, and it is enough. God in community, holy in one, it is enough that you hear us, even as we pray, as we are taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we hear from the book of Romans, chapter 4, starting at verse 13 to verse 25. The reading today is taken from Romans 4, verses 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherence of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith, when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. And so I share a reading with you which was written by Anthony Bloom. At rock bottom, we are made in the image of God. And this stripping is very much like the cleaning of an ancient painting or of a painting by a great master that was painted over in the course of the centuries by tasteless people who had intruded upon the real beauty that had been created by the master. To begin with, the more you clean, the more things disappear, and it seems to us that we have created a mess where there was at least a certain amount of beauty. Perhaps not much, but some beauty. And then we begin to discover the real beauty, which the great master has put into his painting. We see the misery, then, then the mess in between. But at the same time, we have a preview 
of the authentic beauty. And we discover that what we are is a poor person who needs God, but not to God to fill the gaps, God to be met. And so we join in song once more. We hope against all hope. The words are written by Caroline Gillette and hopefully it's to a familiar tune. So it's in new words, but to a familiar tune. And following that, we have our gospel reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. <laughs> reading comes from Mark 8 verses 31 to 38 from the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And then and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in, glory, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Amen. I start this sermon by stating a simple fact, that it is okay for you to be you and for me to be me. God could not love us any more than he or she does already. 
With the health and beauty products industry being worth billions of pounds a year. And the constant stream of adverts we receive on our televisions, radios and pictures in magazines. It's no wonder that some of us can feel somewhat less than perfect. Constant pressure from this industry for us to look a certain way, eat a certain diet, smell like a certain fragrance and be the perfect weight. I find frankly depressing at times. And don't start me on the effects of getting older. With Revitalift this and collagen that. Apparently, we can't be happy with the skin we're in either. God is not interested in how much you weigh or what colour your hair is. And I just want to put on record here that when we get older, we get wrinkles. No amount of creamy applications are going to stop this. These industries just want to make money out of our insecurities and they are good at it. So take a deep breath and relax. Be happy with the skin you're in, your waistline, your personal best at the 100 metres and know you are truly loved by the one that made you, God. God is not interested in how much money you have or whether your wine collection includes a bottle of Moet and Chandon. God is not interested in how many sit-ups you can do or how fast you can run. God is not interested in what car you drive or how many bedrooms your house has or even if you have a house. God, through Jesus, teaches us that our human laws of success and achievement are naught to God. Jesus teaches us this in Matthew 19 verse 30 from the Good News translation that many who are first will be last and many who are now last will be first. God loves us as we are and for who we are. As one of my favourite hymns puts it, just as I am without one plea. Our self-worth must come from our faith in God and knowing we are truly loved by God. In my opinion, being comfortable with who you are and knowing you have enough of everything and being close to God in prayer is probably the closest we can get to heaven whilst we're here on earth. So, as Paul writes to the Roman church regarding the faith of Abraham, for the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through righteousness of faith. The significance of this is, of course, that Paul himself, before his Damascus Road conversion, was a Pharisee and his entire life would have been governed by the laws. Not only that, but the Pharisees were also very zealous and they saw themselves as temple police, ensuring that the communities they served obeyed the laws. Not to do so was to risk being excluded from the temple and placed at the margins of society as an outcast. Paul continues to write to the, remote, to the Roman church regarding the importance of faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. However, as we continue through this passage, 
I feel we need to remind ourselves to guard against exhibiting a holier-than-thou attitude. From verse 22, for me rings alarm bells of concern. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. For me, my faith in God doesn't actually make me any more righteous. In fact, it only serves to help me realise how much I rely on God's grace for forgiveness of my many failings. So, how do you feel your faith affects your understanding of righteousness? How does your faith help you feel good about yourself? How does your faith help your continued determination to serve God? And so we move on to our gospel reading. I wonder what prompted Jesus to start teaching in such a way. The pressure upon Jesus to be the kind of hero the crowds wanted, miracle worker, king who would stand up to the Romans, a national hero, was at times relentless. They must have all have been shocked when Jesus talked about the suffering that lay ahead. With his message of suffering and betrayal, Jesus' teaching on this occasion is blunt and quite shocking for the assembled crowd to hear. So much so that G Peter, one of his closest and keenest disciples, instantly starts to rebuke Jesus for such teaching. However, Jesus is determined his message is heard and quickly returns Peter's rebuke with one of his own. And he wasn't very polite, insisting that Peter was much mistaken and not thinking beyond his own human experience. Jesus clarifies that suffering lies ahead, not only for himself, but for any who would follow his example. Jesus doesn't pull the wool over people's eyes, he is clear that a cross will be involved for anyone who wants to be his follower. Jesus outlines three elements for would-be followers. Self-denial, taking up the cross and following. The conclusion of our gospel passage today is an interesting one. The emphasis on shame is clear. But to what does Jesus refer those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. To suffer capital punishment in Jesus' time was the most shameful way to die, bringing not only shame on the accused but also on their family. To suggest that the Son of Man, God, was in any way close to such shame was a scandal to the Greek-speaking world and a stumbling block to the Jewish world, which believed that a person who hung on a tree was accursed, as we read in Galatians 3. But by becoming a curse for us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse that the law brings. For well, the scripture says, anyone who is hanged on a tree is under God's curse. Christ did this in order that the blessings which God promised to Abraham might be given to the Gentiles by means of Christ Jesus, so that through faith we might receive the spirit promised by God. Paul argues that by becoming a curse for us, Christ redeemed us from the curse of our inability to keep the law. And keying in with the earlier reading. I believe our challenge from this reading is to take our, up our cross on a daily basis. And to live every day with an awareness of God at work in our lives. So can you feel God at work in you and in your life? 
Can you feel the love of God surrounding you every day? Let us come together in prayer. Gracious God, we are called today to consider two thoughts. How do I feel my faith affects my understanding of righteousness? And how can I feel God at work in me and in my life? Jesus, help me come closer to God each day, not through keeping some dreamt up set of rules or moral code, but by displaying a true faithfulness to you and a keenness to love others as I wish to be loved by you. Holy Spirit, help me feel your presence close to me each day. Help me to know that you are beside me, with me every moment, ready to guide me and comfort me. God, help me to understand the promises that you made for my life both now and eternally. Help me to understand that your grace is a free gift, not earned by good works, but by given by faith alone. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we join in song once more. Jesus asked one day. Again, the words written by Caroline Gillette and hopefully a tune that you know. So again, a new words to a well-known tune. And so we come together in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we do not come to talk with you because we think we are so good and wonderful, but because you have been so good and wonderful to us, adopted us into your family and blessed us as your children. Help us to cling to the promises you make to your family, to love us when we see only our selfishness and lack of love to you, to forgive us because 
of everything Jesus did for us in his life of love and in his dying on the cross. To give your family a share in the resurrection when their bodies are worn out and rest in dust and ashes. We thank you for Jesus Christ our Lord who walks out in front of us to lead your people safely through the difficult and trying times ahead. We marvel that he would turn his back on a big name for himself in this life on earth and choose to go to the place of suffering and death out of love for all people in the world. There he identified with all godly people who have called out in despair, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? May your spirit help us to carry the cross for people in need of our loving concern. Doing the best we can for their special needs without counting the cost to ourselves. Bless all those who feel like giving up. Those who feel they cannot take any more sickness and suffering. Those who care for the sick, the dying and those who grieve inwardly. Bless our leaders who have big responsibilities to carry. The leaders of our country, including the Prime Minister, the leaders of the councils, and the leaders of our church and congregations, including our ministers and elders. Refresh us for the journey ahead, replenish our faith, and give us new confidence for the future. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we continue in song.
So we conclude our service with a blessing. May God the Father prepare your journey, Jesus the Son guide your footsteps, and the Spirit of life strengthen your body. The three in one watch over you on every road that you may follow. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So what's on this week? The week commencing the 28th of February. We have worship, or of course, which you've just watched or will watch uh, during the weekend. And then Monday through to Friday at 10 a.m. There are prayers led by the Reverend Yvonne Stone. On the first, Monday the 1st at 10.30 a.m. There's an open Zoom session with a coffee and a chat. Again, Reverend Yvonne Stone has the details of how to join that. Tuesday the 2nd. At 7.45 p.m. home group, uh, Holy Habits, Following Jesus. Uh, contact Sue Davis for details of how to join that session. Uh, again, on the second of the month, we have the Area Lent group. Please contact Yvonne or Pauline for details of how to join the Lent sessions. And on Wednesday the 3rd at 7 p.m., evening prayers are led by myself. And again, contact me if you want the Zoom link on how to join that session via Zoom. So that's what's happening this week. Take care and stay safe. God bless.